Space for sponsoring this video. Hello! This past weekend, I turned 24 and I spent the first day of my mid-20s doing a craft fair in Brooklyn, New York. Yes, technically I was working, but I met some lovely subscribers, ate a bunch of good food, and explored a new city, and you know, that's really all I need in life. My birthday always marks the end of summer and this summer I've been lucky enough to do things I wasn't able to do working in corporate America. I've had time to travel, spend time with friends and family, spend time with myself, move into a beautiful new art studio. But if you've been following me this past year, you might know that I've been silently struggling with my anxiety, worrying about inconsequential problems, afraid of the unknown, and dealing with the stress of figuring out this unconventional job out by myself. It's almost as though working 24 seven before I was self-employed had been masking all these uncomfortable thoughts in my head. I won't lie, it's been difficult to do the one thing I wanna do, make and share my art. I was really nervous about doing an outdoor market for the first time too. I was supposed to do another one in Chicago in September, but the logistics of that overwhelmed me and I decided it was best to cancel. I'm glad I didn't cancel this one though. Looking back, I'm not even sure what I was worried about. Like, thinking about the tent blowing away kept me up at night for days. And spoiler alert, it was perfectly fine. It, the tent didn't blow away and I had a really great experience. I remember being so afraid of doing my first art market that I didn't sleep, being afraid to paint a mural, being afraid to start my own YouTube channel. No matter what it was, each time I forced myself to do the thing I was anxious about, it got a little bit less scary. And each time, I was glad I pushed myself. So I hope by the time my 30th birthday rolls around, I'll have done more hard things little by little. And then I'll look back at the things I was worried about today and think they were all silly. So if you relate to this at all, I'm here to tell you that you could do it. And if you're doing art markets, I also wanna be realistic and share how much a market in New York City costed me. So I'll be sharing all the prices and tally up the cost at the end and how much I made. Keep in mind, it was my birthday weekend though. So I had a couple extra costs because I wanted to make this weekend special. So yeah, let's get packed up and head to Brooklyn. So how much did it cost to get here? I'm not gonna include the cost of all my supplies that I already had, just because I've kind of collected all those the past year or so after doing around, I think four-ish, five-ish markets now. So I'm not gonna include those, but the thing is you could use that over and over and over again. So to travel to Brooklyn, we took my dad's van, which is great. It's on its last leg, but I'm able to fit all my stuff. So we just had to pay for gas. I'm thinking we're gonna spend, I'll put the final number up here, but I'm thinking we're gonna spend probably around like $70 on gas. That's like on the high end. And then parking here was completely free. I needed a place to stay here in Brooklyn. This Airbnb ended up being the perfect location. It's literally five minutes from where we have to be and it's a five minute walk too, which is awesome. And the Airbnb it was $867 for three nights. We're here from Friday to Monday. It comes up to around like 290 I think a day. It's honestly the lowest price I saw. A lot of the hotels here are over like $400 a night and they are farther from the venue. So I'm really glad we found this Airbnb because it is gorgeous here. Prices for the actual booth. I paid a $50 application fee to Renegade Craft and the table fee was $650. So I am not doing a shared booth. I have my own booth this time. So that is why the price is a little bit higher. I think a shared booth is probably around $350, I would say. So for the whole weekend to actually have my table at the fair, it is $700 in total. I didn't do any table rentals or tent rentals or Wi-Fi rentals. So those would all go into the cost if I did do them. And then I have my brother and my boyfriend here with me. So the cost of their meals and all this stuff will go into the final cost. Those are pretty much the main categories when you're doing art markets is the actual vendor fees for the market, transportation, food, hotel accommodations, and then just anything extra after that. It is a really nice day out right now, so I'm so excited. Let's go. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> 
<laughs> We're walking to our car now, our place being five minutes away. It has been really nice, so we parked our car like a block away from the venue and we've just been wheeling everything. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, we left like all our display stuff, the tent, the tables, all that stuff at the venue, so hopefully they're still there today. Everything is on wheels, which has been really easy to transport. This dolly thing, best thing we brought. <laughs> Yay! It's still here. Gosh, the way I filmed absolutely nothing the first day of just being a terrible YouTuber, I should have gave myself an extra 30 minutes to set up in the morning because we were so crunched for time on Saturday. You could check out my previous art market vlogs to get more info on my booth setup, by the way, because this is all the same stuff I'm using. I was being rushed. As soon as I put the finishing touches on my display, people were already shopping and there was a steady stream of people all day. The venue itself was right on the water and the first day was so windy. Art prints and the wind are not a good combo, but thankfully my booth was a couple rows in, so all the other booths shielded my paper products from the wind. And then on Sunday, which you're watching me set up right now sunday was hot you definitely need to bring water electrolytes and sunscreen if you're doing a summer market because if not you will literally melt and you might get heat exhaustion i'd rather be hot than raining so putting all these things aside i had a great weekend you all made my birthday extra extra special and literally a huge huge thank you to anyone who brought me a gift like you are so sweet and so nice like i i just was so happy like that really made my weekend after the first few initial conversations all the nerves and anxiousness that i was feeling beforehand just began to melt away i probably said this before but my favorite part of markets is when people walk by and i could just see their face light up with happiness from my art a few people literally screamed i'm not even kidding like even if they don't buy anything i could have possibly gained another person who appreciates my work and that makes it worth it the weights back there costed me 120 dollars for 16 10 pound weights it was mandatory that we weigh each leg of the tent down 40 pounds and i bought this like last minute on amazon i'm really glad I bought these weights because if not, my tent would have flown away. Okay, so let's talk more about expenses. For food, I spent a total of $341 for three people. This includes breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And while we were in New York, we had to do a mini food tour. So the total is higher compared to cooking and preparing food in the Airbnb, for instance. And also like I wanted to have a nice little birthday dinner. On Sunday morning, I did a drop-in yoga class, so that was another $15. When I go to a new place, I love to check out bookstores, thrift stores, and art supply stores. And my new thing is taking advantage of new student yoga class deals. I found yoga to be very helpful with de-stressing and staying mindful. Plus, my legs hurt after standing all day and they were very grateful for the stretch. So I thought that $15 was worth it. I paid my helpers $100 each for the weekend and the last expense I had was the Venmo transaction fee. I decided to stick to Venmo and cash this weekend, which ended up being fine. Mostly everyone has Venmo and that transaction fee is 1.9% of each sale. I will say though, other people's connection is very spotty. So if I were to redo this, I would have gotten like some sort of hotspot for my phone and done my square reader. As soon as it started, it was over. I was tired and exhausted at the end of the day, but hard work like this is always fulfilling and it honestly went by so fast. In total, I made $4,305. My expenses added up to around $2,294, which makes my total profit $2,011, which is pretty good considering I spent a good amount to make this my birthday trip. If I wanted to cut expenses, I would have only stayed one night. I would have packed meals instead of eating out. And then I probably would have also opted for a shared booth to keep that booth expense down. 
For me, going home with about $2,000 made the market worth it. Depending on your business, this might be a good number or it might be a bad number. It's really all about perspective. My business is different from yours and different from the next person's. And I don't solely rely on markets for my income, but another business might, and they might see that number as not being good. While, while markets are very labor intensive and time consuming, I really think the face-to-face -face contact with customers is very important, if not just as important as having an online store. But I really think those two go hand in hand. And I would like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video and being an all-in-one platform to house my shop landing page and portfolio. At Markets, it's very essential that you're able to drive potential customers to your business page. So what I like to do is put my QR code that leads to my Squarespace links page on the back of my business cards. This page then links to all my shops and my socials and Squarespace allows you to create a beautifully well-designed website in seconds. And creating an online store on Squarespace is super easy. You're able to sell physical, digital, and service products on there. And with their point of sale feature, you can sell in person by connecting a Square reader to the Squarespace app. This way you could keep all your orders, inventory, and customer data in sync with your online store. So if that sounds good to you, head to squarespace.com slash katiemai for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, take 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. That link will be right in my description. So yeah, after each day, me and my crew were exhausted. We would go out to eat and then we started watching the after party on Apple TV, that show is hilarious by the way it's like a comedy murder mystery so all in all it was a really fun chill weekend i had an amazing birthday it seems like 24 is gonna be a good age i hope it is even better than being 23. um Again, I just like to thank everyone who stopped by my booth, everyone who wished me a happy birthday or bought something or took a business card. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for watching this video to the end. Uh, I can't wait to see you in the next one. Goodbye.